So if there is a max or min here, and you pick this, the method will never converge, will stay here, will never go to the other side to approach that. So let's look at any problem. I'm going to share my screen. I hope you're going to find this mind-boggling because now you can you have you are empowered to solve any equation that you never ever thought of being able to solve. Any equation. You cannot dream of solving this. No one can dream of solving this. No one can dream of solving this or this or this. No one. It's impossible. We don't have algebraic methods to solve any of this. But now we are empowered with Newton's method when we will be able to solve all of them. So choose any equation you want to work on. Let's try that number 18. Number 18. Very good, so that's cosine. Cosine 2x equals x to the third. Very good. Stop sharing. Got it. In the first step, I create a function, like we did with the intermediate value theorem. Cosine 2x minus x cubed equals 0. Solving this means solving this. They are identical. So now I create the function cosine 2x minus x cubed. I find its derivative because I need it later. Can anyone give us a derivative of this? Anyone? Is it 2 sine, negative 2 sine of um, 2x? Very good. Excellent. Minus 3x squared. Perfect. Uh, that was Jordan. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, in step number two, we will plug this function in the graphing calculator. And I have it ready for you. Here it is. Not the function, I, didn't, I mean the uh, calculator. Okay, so in y equals, I'm going to clear everything I had before. I'm going to punch in cosine 2x. I'm going to make sure that my mode is in radian. Oops. First, make sure it's in radian. Okay. Uh, y equals cosine 2x. And then minus x cubed. And then I go to second and table. And I'll start with small numbers always. I'll start with 0. And then 1. Yay! That's all I need. F of 0 is positive. F of 1 is negative. I'm going to stop sharing. So then I'll say um, F of x continuous on the interval 0, 1 as a difference of continuous functions. And f of 0 positive, comma, f of 1 negative by intermediate value theorem, there exists a c or an r, whatever you want to call it, in the open interval 0, comma, 1 such that f of c is 0. In step number 3, I will pick x equals 0. You decide. As long as, as long as, f prime at that value is not 0. That's why I already determined f prime. So make sure you choose so that f prime is not 0. So what is our choice here? It better not be 0. Because this is zero, this is zero, I'm in big trouble. 
I have no choice here, actually. I have to use one. In step four, I will create a function that I like to call Newton's method or Newton's function, n of x, which will be x minus f of x cosine 2x minus x cubed divided by the derivative in parentheses negative, I mean, I'm not entering it in the calculator yet, I just wanted to, I'm jumping ahead, 3x cubed, okay, fine, this is the function we enter now in the calculator, so don't de delete anything you have, because we can do this, we can insert, I need this, don't delete it, so I have insert x minus parentheses for the top and that's the numerator close the parentheses divide again in parentheses negative 2 sine 2x two sine 2x two close the parentheses and then minus and what was it uh, 3 I wrote uh, x cubed here, sorry, it's x squared. So uh, minus 3x squared. Minus 3x squared. Close the parentheses. Get out of there with second and quit. Go to second and variables. No, I'm sorry. Go to variables. Y variables. Function. Call function 1. In parentheses put 1 and enter. What do you think this is? Anyone? What is this number? This number is our first iteration. I plugged in here the x0, which is 1. I plugged in here 1. I plugged in here 1, and 1, and 1. Of course, 1 radian inside cosine. 1 radian inside cosine. And I got out my first answer. Now, I want this answer to be plugged in again in the original function, in the Newton's function. Here's how, what I, how I do it. I go to second and entry and I overwrite one by the previous answer second and answer what do you think this is? Uh, the next iteration? exactly I got a question uh, instead of putting in second answer could you stick in the, uh, the y1 again? But y1 is the function. I need the I need the next value. I need I need x1 to be entered in there. I need this number to be entered here. But now I don't need that anymore because the calculator will enter the previous answer now. I don't have to write anything. And I can continue forever. So x3 equals 0.64776993.25. Let's stop at the number of digits you want. What is the number of digits you would like to stop at? It doesn't matter because, as you see, the method converged actually in four steps. The calculator cannot calculate more than what I already have. And once this repeats, it will always repeat. So I found the solution with two, four, six, eight, ten 
decimal digits. Extremely powerful. So that is the solution. And now you are empowered with this method. You can solve any equation that you can think of. I'm real fast. What, uh, on the calculator, what, 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 uh, what tool on the calculator did you use to do the, the, uh, the, the graph thing with the Y1? So um, I go to variables because I have the function Newton's method. This is the n of x. This, everything we see here is x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n, right? This is the entire Newton's method. After I enter the function in y1, I go to variables. I choose y variables. So I go to the right, one step. I choose a function, not parametric or anything else. I'm choosing a function. And I'm choosing function y1. Why? Because that's where I put Newton's function. And then I put in the first, the, uh, uh, the initial value of choice, which in this case has to be 1. If you want, you can choose something else than 0 and 1. You don't have to choose the endpoints. You can choose something else. You don't have to choose 0. You can use 0 0.1 if you want. The method may converge even faster. Who knows? Uh, but that's, uh, that's really not really important. So once I get this, the next step is I copy the previous answer, but I have to overwrite the 1 with this. The previous answer is right here, second and answer. So once I see y1 of the answer, it means that the calculator will plug in the same function, but now not 1, but this number, in order to give us x sub 2. And then all I have to do is just this, and click. Second, click, yet yeah, enter. Second, enter, enter. So the calculator, at each and every step, will take, but if you perform another calculation in between, then you are messing up the process. So you have to finish the process before you do other calculations for other problems you want to work on. So Y1 plugs in this. In the next one, it plugs in this, X sub 2. In the next calculation, it plugs in X sub 3, and so on and so forth. Of course, there is no point in me continuing, because from this moment on, all decimals are the same. Is this better? Yeah, I just need to know where it was they calculated. Yep, and that's it. That's Newton's method. All you need to know about it is the function. All you need to know is how to build this function, how to use the intermediate value theorem to determine the endpoint, and pick the correct value. Be very careful because if you pick, if I pick zero, so let me show you. If I pick zero, I mean the trouble. I'm not going to get anything. I'm just curious to see. So um, variables, I'm just curious to see what the calculator, I, I never used it. Okay, so let's see what happens if I plug in zero. It should scream at me. It should absolutely scream at me. And it does. So once you establish the function, you have the first, you have the function and the derivative, then you establish Newton's function. You put in the calculator, make sure that the denominator is not zero with this, for the starting point, and then the method will converge in two, three, four steps at the most. Very powerful method. I hope you are happy that now you can solve any equation on the planet. With, with at least 10 decimal digits, as the calculator allows. At least 10. Any equation. You don't need any algebra anymore. <laughs> to solve any equation, trigonometric or otherwise, just anything you can think of on the planet.